yeah, the the podcast, like talking about mental health and kind of going back to what you're saying, I think for me, one of the, the things that's really important to me um, is understanding that there are so many people in the world who do tremendous things that nobody knows about. And I think that to me is something I really try to help other people um, share their messages. I have a, a very large platform on uh on you know social media networks and stuff like that and i think it's like a real privilege to have that um but i try to use it to actually elevate others and i think when you're when i was talking about that that podcast it's it's really how do we help people see the value in their work and there's like a really great video i talked about it's called obvious to you amazing to others not mine and it was actually um it talks about like the things that you do every single day that you just do and you don't even think about to somebody else. That's the most mind blowing thing. And so you need to share those ideas with the world. And I think that that to me has always resonated. So that's really part of my mission um, of the work that I do is trying to elevate other people. And, but like also sharing my own things and I like going back, I didn't know this was recording the the podcast thing. I just wanted to share thoughts with people and part of it too like it's cool that it actually stuck with you because I never know what it does. But I, I also try to like, I don't something you might notice about my videos, my content. I don't overly edit. I don't do that because I think people get really freaked out when they see all this incredible editing and like all this other stuff that makes it. And they're like, well, I can't do that. So then I don't even want to be a part participate whereas I just try to make mine just you know just me grabbing my phone and sharing some ideas because I think people get lost in the the, the glitz and the glamour of the editing and really the message is what matters it's the content that matters yeah I think that's right. like, that's the big thing is I think that goes back to the, what you were saying about you don't know if people are interacting not and trying to encourage people to interact I think like that that voice is so important that we know that we're helping the other people but I think if we could try and have more conversations and that kind of allows people to know that their voice matters too, if that makes sense, like rather than just sharing totally. things. And, yeah. So, so it's really weird uh, like that we're talking about this and the, and I'll tell you why. For some reason this week, I, I blogged, I wrote about something. I can't even remember what I wrote about to be honest with you. And three people, and I know that like doesn't seem like a really large number, three people uh, shared it and said, Hey, this is a really great article. Uh, make sure that this goes up to our staff and three people on the same day, probably within an hour of one another actually meant to send it to somebody else, but they replied to me. So I actually had no idea that it resonated, but they but I only found out by accident. Yeah. And I actually said that to one of the people like, Hey, it's great. Like I, you know, if it, I love hearing I'm like, Hey, don't, no problem. I actually love hearing that it resonates and they're like, yeah, I actually should be more intentional about sharing that with you because that like, you know, like I actually got three compliments on my work by accident. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's also like, but I never, I never, like I said, you know, I never know if actually anything sticks out. And I, I honestly, Naomi, I don't look at likes. I'm, it's not something I've ever been driven by. It's not a big focus for me because it, it seems artificial. Like I know people like my stuff. Um, and they don't read it sometimes. And maybe like I like stuff sometimes to bookmark it, but not necessarily because I like it. But I think, as you said earlier, having those conversations, letting people know um, they, they bring value to your life is really important. And I try my best to comment on blogs when I have the opportunity uh, to share good stuff. And that, that, and that elevates then what you're actually like the research part and like what the content is. It elevates the conversation to go further and uh, what, what do you think? What do I think? I think that's what I'm noticing on Twitter. I'm trying to be more active as in, I really want to try and grow my network of people because I want to learn from like There's so much good things going on Twitter now and I can learn yeah. from it. But I think sometimes whenever I comment, it's, there, there isn't that reciprocal conversation. And I think that's what I'm hoping to try. I, I, the more I'm doing it, the more I'm finding those networks of people who actually are having those reciprocal conversations. Yeah. And I think that's that's what where we're going to do the best learning as like educators or learning from each other is like those conversations as well as what you're learning, what your takeaways are, what your what your insights are. Yeah. So actually, um, one of the things I did today, I did a, a podcast 
just me talking um, about a tweet that I saw from uh, a friend of mine named Wesson Kieschnick. And he tweeted something about accountability and like, you know, if you take accountability away, teachers are working harder than ever, et cetera, et cetera. And I actually uh, challenged the tweet in my podcast, but challenged it in a way that I know Weston well enough that I know he's actually agree, he would agree with me. And just because of how do we see the word accountability, do we, and, and who, what are we accountable to? Are, when we think of accountability, do we think of like test scores or do we think of like accountability to helping kids, which are not always the same thing. And I actually did a, like a 10 minute podcast. I, I wasn't sure I had enough to say about it. So I didn't reach out to Weston before and I did a podcast on it. I haven't uploaded it, but I reached out to him after I'm like, Hey, I just did a podcast and I challenged what you said a little bit, but I actually think you'll agree with me. So I just want you to like, like just listen to it. Let me know if it's okay. Cause I actually kind of felt bad. Like I don't want anyone. Cause I think sometimes when we challenge, you have to be really thoughtful if you do it because I don't like seeing when there's a challenge and then people dogpile and then it gets personal. And, and it's actually funny because he's like, Oh, I totally agree with you. And I said, Hey, let's do a podcast together and talk about it. And so then him and I actually had like an hour long conversation on another podcast where we talked about other things, but also that tweet and kind of having a conversation about it. And I said, that was like, that to me is, that was the real power of these networks is like just kind of digging into ideas and getting me to think. And I told him like that tweet, I had thought about doing a podcast on it for four days. Like it was sticking in my head and now I'm actually talking with you, having a conversation, digging into it. And yeah, I think it was really powerful, but But I think think you actually, sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, but I think it goes back to like that idea of like what you're going to use your voice for and like that grow in your voice. And I think it it is really, I'm, whenever I, before I post something, I do still get an idea of, oh, what does this mean for other people? And like, and not, not worry essentially, but you want people to be able to challenge you, like you say, but challenge in a positive way, like as in like a critically mm-hmm. think and like, what are we going to get out of this rather than just someone slamming you? Because I had a couple of comments, like a couple, like maybe last year. And it was like, I don't agree with this. This isn't right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's right. not about, it's not about actually not agreeing. It's about what are we going to learn from each other and why do you not agree and what what can I learn from you if you don't yeah. agree with me? I think that the challenge is good because that means that we're critically thinking together and we teach our kids to critically think, but we don't want them to actually slam what you're doing and like that that, that prevents people from wanting to actually share in the end of them. Yeah, and I think one of the things that I have really worked on myself, both in a virtual and like online environment and face-to-face is when I am struggling with the concept or the idea of what someone shares, I don't actually make a statement, but I ask a question. And the reason I ask a question is maybe I misinterpreted, maybe, you know, I'm missing something that was meant and then it's conversational. But other part of it too, is I really focus on listening to what that person has said. And even if I still disagree with them, where are the places that we actually are on the same page? And so people know that we're actually kind of fighting the same battle. We're actually focused on doing the same thing. And I think really when we're actually challenging ideas, I think it's good, but do we actually start by challenging by making statements and making assumptions or do we actually ask questions so we can have a better understanding uh, of what is being said? And like, you know, your whole, um, your whole podcast about the idea of empathy that is kind of rooted in the notion of empathy is I don't always know the, how the person's day is going. I don't know kind of what's going on with them. And I don't know that was the character limit in a tweet. Actually, did it actually leave out something that they want to say, but they couldn't fit it in. And really, when you ask those questions, you start digging into this. And I would actually want, when I look at this, I always look at like, I I want to feel that the way that you're challenging me would be the same way that you would challenge my daughter in a classroom. And how are you doing that? And would I be comfortable watching that interaction? And so that's something that's really important for me. And I'm, and I'm like, I wish I could say, oh, I'm 100%. I've never done it wrong. And yeah, of course, I've, you know, done things and probably made feel people, um, you know, feel less than in, in maybe an interaction. And I try to be overly thoughtful of that. I, I shared in a podcast. And I know this is a weird thing to say. I just assume everyone's having mental health issues uh, in the sense. I know, and I know it sounds bad at first. Because if I assume that you're having some issue there, I'm going to be much more thoughtful as opposed to like, maybe your day is going bad. 
And so I just always try to do that because it makes me nicer. And then, and what's the, what's the worst harm of me being too nice to a person that I disagree with? And so like, I, I know that sometimes people will tweet things that are, you know, they might think not think twice of, and it sits with me all day because it was like the 10th thing in a day. And I was just like the final straw. So I just try to always have an understanding that people are going through things that I don't see, especially on the other side of the screen. And I can't see their face, can't see their reaction. And I think that really ties into the notion of empathy is understanding like I've gone through stuff and I can have bad days. So maybe that person is too. And so if I treat them that way by default, then the conversation is always going to be to a positive. Yeah. And I think you mentioned that in your, um, in your innovators mindset book about like the idea of whenever you're in leadership, it's, it's the people are actually, mo most people are generally trying to do the best they can. Like, I think yeah. like that, that's the biggest thing. And I think if it's, I, I'm kind of the same as you is like, it's, if you think that people are, if you think people as like they've gone through stuff that day, then that helps you understand what they've actually been going through. If it is mental health issues or if it is just like oh. they have had like a like past a crash, past this, past that, it, it all adds up. And then we talk about sandpaper moments and I'm like that sandpaper moment of like the sandpaper just keeps rubbing, keeps rubbing, keeps rubbing. Right. And then it ends up like you end up having something that's quite sore, but it wasn't sore. All those little rubs weren't sore, but it actually makes right. it quite a, quite a sore part then. And I think that like in the book you talk about that really ties in with the leadership aspect of if you really understand the people who you're working with, like whether it be learners who are your your colleagues and your, your teachers, or whether it's the learners who are actually in the classroom who you're teaching, that's that's gonna help you build those relationships. And that's like that's a big part of it. Yeah, and like the so in my work, uh being an administrator uh, for several years we would have like we had a very um challenging behavioral program so if students you know there's like basically dangerous um to themselves or could possibly to others we had a specific program to work with those kids and sometimes those kids would be just swearing at me and you know saying horrible things to me and I know this sounds maybe weird. I never, that never bothered me. And I didn't agree with it. I didn't think it was right. But a lot of times this, the swearing wasn't because of me. It was at me because of something that happened earlier, something that happened at home, something that happened um, to the day. And I, I guess I shouldn't say it never bothered me early in my career. I would like cried, you know, basically from like five to seven every night as a first year teacher because I took every one of those things personal yeah. and I remember um, we had a speaker at an opening day and he said something that really resonated with me um, and I always remember it he said never let an eight-year-old ruin your day and it just like was the like I was actually teaching I think grade four at the time when he said it and I'm like I am doing that all the time like and you know a lot of times we take those moments really personal but it's a kid going through something that many of adults can handle and there's, and then they're showing up to school and actually doing pretty great stuff. And so I just, you know, have a conversation with that. Wait till they cool down. It's, it's kind of like when, you know, you're yelling at someone to be quiet. It actually does the opposite of what you intend. And I think part of it as an educator, it's really understanding that, you know, 99% of the time it has nothing to do with you. It's, it's something else and like it's not that I didn't address it and I want to make sure that you know because we don't want kids swearing at people um, anywhere and we have to have those conversations but it wasn't something that I would lose sleep over um, for the sake like oh, I can't believe that kid did that to me I'd be more concerned about like what is that kid going through that that happened I think that's really important in the empathy piece with like with like I think that's why I'm so passionate about it. Is like I work a lot with like um, special needs kids and like the like the mental health and the so well being um, yep. kids are going through that at home. I think that's why I'm so passionate about empathy. Is like that instead of taking it personal, instead of like letting it feel like you save so much time not having that attack because then you can say you take take, take a step back because a lot of times you can it can just rise it can escalate and just and just like you're going back and they're going back and you're going back and they're going back so that's time wasted and relationships broken because there's no understanding there but like if you can take a step back and kind of like understand maybe they're going through this maybe they're going through that and then then act with that type of intention that helps build the relationships and the kids understand that you're there for them and you can see them as what they're going through because they can't understand it and they can't they can't navigate it themselves 
Yeah, and I think I think on the other end of it too, like having an understanding of that is also being able to show vulnerability to your kids when you are struggling and when you are having our time. And I remember um, specifically, I, I lost my first dog, Kobe. I like this is my first. I know it sounds weird. It's like the first thing that I really cared about that ever died in my life. Like I never had a person in my life die. You know, I never had a pet. Like I had like a budgie when I was a kid and that died and that was horrible, but not the connection I had with my dog. And I had to go back to school because of whatever reason. I probably would have taken a day off if I had the choice at that point. And I actually talked to my students and said like, hey, I'm, I'm having a really rough day. I lost my best friend basically uh, today. And I'll tell you that the, like, this is when I was a principal. And I'll tell you that the, the conversations and the, the love and care that came from the kids was really powerful because they actually saw me as more than a principal. They saw me as a person that also was a principal. And I think it is important that we are comfortable sharing some of our struggles, sharing some of those things, because kids look up to teachers, and I know I did, as like these perfect human beings that have no flaws, know everything, and just are these incredible people that don't have anything. But, you know, we all struggle. We all have issues. And I think there's a better understanding um, when kids see that because I think a lot of times kids will hold on to stuff because they see you as perfect. So if I, if you know, that I don't want to show that because then it makes me look weak as yeah. opposed to like, hey, actually me being able to talk about these things and share them is actually a source of strength. And is, you know, being able to ask for help is a source of strength. That, that to me is really important as, as an educator, you know, when we're working with students and colleagues too. And I think colleagues need to see that as well, because I, I don't, I don't know everything. I don't always, you know, I'm not always happy. And, but having conversations with that, I think really helped to work with my staff as well. And it's so true. Like it's, I actually wrote a blog post about this like two weeks ago. I think I'm trying to read books each week and do a blog post about them. And, um, and, and that, that's why I really reflected on my first year teaching was I had a big, 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 like same as you crying every day. Like just re- I was yeah. teaching in inner, inner London. And, um, and th- that was because of expectations I put on myself that were unrealistic because of the people that I'd seen. So like yeah. I, w- yeah. I was seeing that a parent, like, like parents and like adult, being an adult, I thought meant that you had all the answers and you were just, you knew what you had to do all the time. And that was my mm-hmm. biggest reflection and my biggest change in myself is like the fact that I, it's okay to go through those things and actually sharing it and actually going through it. But it builds that trust. I think that's why I've noticed is the more that I'm vulnerable, because I intentionally try to be vulnerable and share that with the same as me. I had my dog died last year and um, I, I did, I told the kids the next day and it was, yeah. it was obviously back home. So I couldn't even see her. I couldn't go through it. And that was just, it was really nice that the kids were able to see that. But also I felt like that source of strength from them. Like, I feel like, mm-hmm. like you're saying about like that kind of like that, that element of I didn't feel like I had to pretend because you're kind of in, in teaching college or I think as teachers you're told to leave everything at the door and I think of course you're not going to come in you're not going to like be like oh what was me and like like have a big yeah. like drama queen moment about it but it's actually how do you share it in a positive way and like and, and go from there yeah and one of the things I always talk about is the importance of relationships in education and how crucial that it is but a lot of people say is like hey it's really important that we care for our kids which is obvious But when I mean relationships, when we talk about effective relationships, they're reciprocated, they're back and forth. And so of course I know my students, but do I, you know, let them know a little bit thing, you know, things about me. And, you know, just kind of like one of the things I love, I love basketball. I love dogs. I'm a big animal lover. And I would spend a lot of my time connecting with kids at the beginning of class, you know, during class time, talking about those things. And people would say, well, like, like, but you got to teach this, you got to teach this, you got to teach this. But what's really important to understand is when I actually spend that time having those conversations and sharing that, then when we actually do get to work, when we actually, you know, dig in and do some really tough learning, it's way easier. And I'm dealing with less classroom management. I'm dealing with, you know, less behavioral things because I've actually spent time building those relationships with kids. And so a lot of people, because they don't see that as necessary, they're actually spending that time, but they're spending it more frustrated dealing with the, the negative issues, dealing with disruption in class because they haven't done it. I'm not saying like, you know, if you do that, you'll never have a disruption. Obviously that's not true, but you, it's really thinking about the, how do you see time as an investment 
to build those relationships so you can actually have a better classroom environment where you kids are more comfortable challenge where you challenge them as well to get better because they know that you care about them and even you know when you're pushing them if they fall you got your they like you have their back and that to me like one of the biggest things about building relationships with students is not only that they feel cared for but that you actually create that ability where you're pushing them because really if we can't you know challenge our kids if we can't challenge the students in our class and they're not able to grow from those challenges then then w what is the purpose of education like it is to grow it is to become better but you need some conflict and when you have that conflict you better have be around people that you know care about you i think that's like it's you, you say in your book as well but like why do learners want to be there like why why should right. they why should they care about being there and I think that's what my biggest change as a teacher as well because I was t teaching the um, I'm trained in early years but um, yep. um the last two years I wanted to go up into the senior school and if you don't if you don't like get to know them they're just why are you here like they do not they do not have that I think for the juniors you kind of have that relationship but it's a bit different I think if you don't show yourself in a senior setting and that really is where I changed my my approach to teaching is I was really starting to share like what I was interested in, like share about Harry Potter, share about all those things. Right. And those relationships were so much better. Like I never really thought that I needed to do that because it was more of like a, I need to know about them and they, I need to know about them. And like, if I know about them, then like that's going to be good. But the deep relationship that I actually got so much more was whenever I started to be vulnerable and share myself and share my interests. And then they would come in and say, oh, Miss Tone, I seen this today. Look at what like this relates to you. And that relationship, like you're saying, is like instead of just relating to them, they start to relate yeah. to what you want to do 100%. as well and what you say. Yeah. Yeah. And Damon, can I ask you what do you what do you teach right now? Um, I'm currently teaching year three and four, so I'm in a primary school. So yeah. Yeah. So like one of the things, and I asked you that specifically um, because one of the things I've suggested to teachers for years and really would solve a lot of problems really early on, and I know this sounds weird is that most elementary educators, what they do at the beginning of the year, they come into the classroom two weeks before school starts, they do all the decorations, they make the classroom look totally perfect. And, you know, it's amazing. And then kids walk in, half of them don't even care, to be honest with you. And, or sometimes we actually send messages to our kids that are actually not beneficial. And I'll give you an example. So when I first started um, teaching, my first year was grade four. And uh, the teacher crossed the hallway uh, had her deck room decorated as beautiful and she had like penguins outside her classroom and every penguin had a, a, a the, the name of a kid you know because she loved penguins so that was there and so her like her vision and like she's odd like this teacher's awesome by the way and sometimes we just do those things like let's be honest so I'm like okay now I gotta decorate my room because this <laughs> teacher because now I'm gonna look bad if I don't so I spent all my time decorating my classroom, but I'm different than her. So I actually, um, I did basketballs because I love basketball. And then I put like every kid's name on a basketball and my vision is like, they're going to walk in and they're like, oh, oh, my name's on a basketball. This is going to be the greatest year ever. And so what really happened is that some of the kids were excited when they saw it, but some kids who hated sports were like, I have a year with this guy. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Like yeah. this guy who's obsessed with sports, like that's the first thing he's talking about. And you know, it's like everywhere on the walls, like I got a poster of Michael Jordan, that kind of thing. And so like, here's something I challenge educators to do. Before your kids come back elementary, right? Don't decorate your classroom. Just, just actually leave it empty. Now I just saved you. If you're gonna take this advice, not only did I just save you two weeks of your life, right? Like you're not gonna have this, but have a bunch of materials in your classroom and when the kids get there say what do you want the classroom to look like you know what would you like you know maybe we'll figure out like how are we going to decorate this are you going to have a portion of the wall you're going to do this so now now i just saved you a bunch of time doing something that we just do because let's be honest a lot of people do it because the person across the hallway and they feel guilt but the other thing is that i'm going to spend that time right at the beginning building relationships and understanding like hey that kid decorated this and put that up there what does that tell me about that kid and so right away, I'm building that time. And, and the thing that, the reason I bring this up is because it drives me crazy when I hear people say, oh, this is our room. This is our room. I'm like, well, who decorated it? Well, I did. Well, it's not really, your, it's not really our room. It's your room. We're just here. Because if it's our room, then how come we didn't get a say? Like, how come none of us are represented on those walls? And I say this to educators all the time. I'd rather see 
the imperfections of my daughter on the walls than I'd rather see the perfection of a teacher. And like what, like, you know, if I know my daughter actually had a hand in decorating that, it might not look as good, but I am, I am way more excited about it. Right. And I encourage, I, I challenge people. And then people are like, you know, they say, Hey, relations are important. I don't have enough time. And like, no, no, no. But I like, I want to do that. Though. Like I want to actually, I don't like, I don't want to give that one up. And I'm like, well, like, like what would happen? And I had a teacher actually do it and say, it was amazing the connection she built with their class right away. And what she was actually blown away by how awesome her classroom looked like because she saw her kids represented all over the wall. I think it's like, but it is a very, it's a mind shift change though from like, yeah. say like, cause that, that was never, cause I'm actually teaching in a school where it's like a hub environment. So it's not, we don't have like class desks and don't have that yeah. kind of thing. And, um, and that's a complete mind shift change towards the way that I got brought up in teaching and education. And like a lot of teachers here are now in education, they've still been brought up in that society where the teacher does have a lot of the control and, and, the, and it's totally. all kind of control. So we, we, it's almost like a mind shift change, but when we haven't experienced it, and I think that's a big shift is like trying to show teachers. I think that's what you do really well. I think that's why I get from the book is like, examples of what it could look like and provoking that mind shift and i think that's one of the questions i wanted to ask can i really well i'm gonna ask can, can i just ask yeah. some quick Naomi? Yeah. yeah when you grew up in school did you have bells like did you have like bells yeah. to tell you the next class and can i like you you didn't you said were you in london for a while i was i was in london but i'm from ireland i'm from ireland. okay yeah. so did you ever have a teacher in ireland when the bell goes off and the kids try to leave and say the bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss, I dismiss you. you. Yeah. <laughs> right. So like you, you could have finished the sentence for me. So here's, what I want you to think about. So you live, um, you, you grew up in Europe. I grew up in Canada, totally different generations. And we actually, I could say something I knew a teacher said to you at some point. And the reason why that's actually really important. What I just said is that we passed like your, I guarantee you this and no offense to your teacher, your teacher didn't make that up. And guess what? My teacher didn't make it up either. And their teacher didn't make it up. Somebody said that once and everyone's like, oh, that's a great thing. And it just got passed down to school, to school, to teacher, to teacher. Most educators say that because some teacher said it to them. And so one of the things that we always have to challenge is, are we doing this because it's always been done? Or are we doing this because it's actually really beneficial? And like the, the decorating the classroom, the decorating the classroom thing it happens in many schools because it's a tradition that's passed down. But like you look at other things like awards, right? Awards are done in schools because schools have always done awards. The way we teach certain things, like even, even schools, like you look at, um, at the high school level, why do we have our classrooms, like our setting or whatever, 40 minutes and blah, blah, blah. But we know that's not really beneficial learning. And it's not because we know what's what's best is because it's what we do. And so we have to look at some of those things. I'm not saying tradition is bad, but I think that you have to challenge tradition if it's not beneficial to kids. Like I'm not against tradition. I'm, get, I'm against doing things that aren't actually beneficial. And sometimes yeah. it's new things that are sometimes bad and, and old things are sometimes bad, but we have to be able to ask that question. 